session of the Teaching and Learning of Technology Summer Series. Our final session will be next Wednesday on July 22nd. Symposium sessions will be in the morning from 10 to 11.30 Eastern, and Canvas Day will be in the afternoon from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern. You can find a full program listing on the TLT Summer Series website that my co-chair is posting in the chat right now. As a reminder, this session will be recorded and recordings of the sessions are posted as available on the TLT Summer Series YouTube channel, which you can find on our Summer Series website. Any technical difficulties should be directed to the panelists in chat and questions for our presenters can be posted in the Q&A feature. In that Q&A feature, you can ask questions, upvote questions, and comment on questions. We will now turn things over to our first presentation today, Connected Learning in the Integrated Course Knowledge Approach. Do you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. So uh, hi, and welcome to my presentation titled Connected Learning and Integrated Course Knowledge, or the CLICK approach. My name is Omar Ashur. Uh, I am an Associate Professor of Industrial Engineering at uh, Penn State Berlin. And I'm presenting this work on behalf of my colleagues, Christian Lopez from Lafayette College, James Cunningham and Conrad Tucker from Carnegie Mellon uh, University. So, um, typical engineering curriculum, they are uh, course centered, uh, meaning it includes a set of courses that the student must take in a certain order. Some of the courses are prerequisites to others and some courses should be taken concurrently. Uh, the reason for this order is that the students will need the knowledge from previous courses or concurrent courses to succeed in the next ones. And the industrial engineering curriculum is not an exception to this uh, setting. Uh, this course centered curriculum is limited in its ability to establish connection between uh, fundamental topics such, uh, and, and uh, real world problems. The lack of connection could be as a, as a result of uh, time and context separation between these courses and from the fact that we, the instructors, uh, most of the time use simplified examples and exercises to fit the class schedule. And these examples most of the time do not represent real life situation. Moreover, the current curriculum relies on the students uh, ability to connect the, co the knowledge across the courses. Um, researchers are suggesting that the responsibility of connecting the uh, and, and transferring the knowledge should not be on the student, but rather on the curriculum. So if we just look at this uh, uh, example from the industrial engineering curriculum, as you see in this example, if a student want to learn something about simulation, uh, he or she must have a knowledge in operations research and in programming. And to have this knowledge, they need also to have knowledge in math and probability and statistics. And based on the current curriculum, structure, we assume that the student will be able to connect this knowledge across these courses uh, in order to understand uh, simulation. So this is how we view the current uh, or traditional teaching approach. Uh, here I'm focusing on the last two years of industrial engineering major, since our project actually is focusing on this student population. Uh, but the work in this project can be extended to uh, include the first two years, uh, as well as uh, other majors, uh, if we want to look at the concept of this approach. So the students come, uh, or the student comes to the major uh, with the needed fundamental knowledge in math, uh, physics, and chemistry. Uh, one of the first and important courses in the IE major is IE322, which is a um, uh, course for fundamental concepts in probability and statistics. The student then move to the um, next course uh, of statistics and uh, probability. This is the more advanced course here. And then take other courses in operations research and simulation along with other uh, 400 level courses or upper uh, level courses. So usually each one of these courses is taught by a different instructor and here I'm representing, representing the instructor and the 
way that the course is delivered by different vehicles. Uh, so each instructor uses different ways or themes to de deliver the material and assist the student's performance or understanding. For example, instructors could use traditional lecturing, uh, project and problem-based methods, case studies, and in-class uh, exercises or homework, and as well, uh, etc. Uh, moreover, instructors could use examples from uh, various systems, meaning they could use maybe manufacturing systems or healthcare systems or any service system. These methods are, are great. Uh, we are not saying that these methods are not uh, or, or they are bad, but when we use them, we still assume that the majority of the students will be able to connect the knowledge across these courses as well as with real life applications. Unfortunately, this is not always uh, the case. So to mitigate some of these issues, we have developed an approach and we call it the Connected Learning and Integrated Course Knowledge or CLIC for short. The uh, CLIC approach leverages the virtual reality technology or VR. Uh, VR provides a suitable platform in the educational settings uh, in which participants have the sense of being part of the environment. It enhances visualization, interaction, and collaboration. It allows students to interact with objects and space in real time compared to traditional uh, teaching methods um, that we use in classroom. Uh, moreover, it's uh, a portable um, um, uh, uh, way to deliver the class. Now, with VR, we create what we call virtual systems. The virtual systems are used as a common theme or a story that is used across multiple courses in the uh, industrial engineering curriculum. This way, the students can see the connections between the concepts taught at different classes. In addition to that, uh, with, the, with this theme or story, the students can always go back to previous concepts when, when it's needed. So for example, um, students learn about data collection in IE322. So they can collect data uh, such as the time between uh, produced parts in the manufacturing system, in, in this case, the virtual system. Then they learn uh, about probability distributions in IE322, uh, 323, sorry. They can fit distributions to the data they collected uh, from IE322. Then in IE425 and IE453, they can use these distributions in their, for example, calculations in queuing theory um, calculations, and they can also use them to build simulation models in the simulation course. The virtual systems are uh, a close representation to real life application. So uh, we hypothesize that the students will be able to connect the concepts that they learn in a classroom with real life application because of this connection. <clears throat> the virtual systems should support various challenges and can be used across the curriculum. They should be complex enough and easy to implement. In our case, we uh, are using a power drill manufacturing system uh, and we use Unity game engine uh, to develop the uh, virtual environment. Um, and we implemented this, uh, the, the, these snapshots that you see, these are from the virtual system that we implemented in IE322, which is the introductory probability and the statistic course. Here is a small uh, video from the environment. Um, so the students first start with, in a classroom, they select the course that they wanna learn about. And then uh, once they select it, they go to uh, what we call a viewing room. In this room, uh, they have uh, access to some of the tools such as stopwatch, uh, a calculator, uh, and they uh, can take some notes. Uh, they can observe a manufacturing environment, collect some data, and then learn about uh, basic concepts and statistics. Uh, for this uh, virtual system, we only have basic uh, statistics uh, concepts. And then they can do some calculations, verify their answers. They also can uh, go down to the environment, interact with some of the objects in the environment, um, 
currently the environment, uh, th this interaction with the environment does not provide any educational uh, content, uh, but we, um, we are going to add some of the uh, items here so that the students will be able to control some of the aspects in this environment uh, and learn uh, about them. So this is the uh, overall, overall flow of our experiment that we implemented in the classroom. Uh, so our study involved two groups, control and intervention groups. Uh, at the beginning of the course for both groups, and actually each group was um, uh, at a different uh, year. Uh, one of them was in, the, in fall 2018 and the other one was in fall 2019. Uh, the, the, at the beginning of each class, uh, we administered the demographic engineering identity and mayor's brig uh, indicator survey. Uh, the demographic survey includes questions such as uh, the student age, gender, race, and the experience uh, in VR and gaming in general. The engineering identity survey uh, requires the, the users to rate a set of 12 statements using a, a six-point Likert scale, uh, where there are uh, three main items in the survey one item about recognition, uh, uh, another about interest, and the last one about performance. These surveys at the beginning, they were used to establish a baseline and make sure that the groups are statistically comparable. And in our case, both the groups, they were statistically comparable based on these uh, surveys and based on this data. The course then after that uh, proceeds normally for both groups. Uh, and uh, for the intervention group, we administer the uh, intervention, which is using the VR teaching modules toward the end of the semester. Uh, and then after that, we uh, collect um, uh, the, uh, something about the knowledge and these are knowledge tests that we created to measure the performance of the students. Uh, we uh, again collect the engineering identity and we collect uh, something called Instructional Materials Motivation Scale Questionnaire, or uh, IMMS. The R is for reduced uh, version of this uh, IMMS survey, which is basically for uh, motivation, to measure the motivation uh, from this uh, new intervention. So looking at the um, results for the Instructional Materials Motivation uh, Scale Questionnaire, um, the results show that the participants in the intervention group reported greater motivation compared to uh, the participants in the control group. Uh, however, the, these differences, they were not statistically significant at alpha level uh, of 0 0.05. Uh, but when looking at the elements of the um, uh, IMMS uh, scale, um, um, we saw uh, uh, a greater uh, attention, confidence, satisfaction for the intervention group uh, compared to the uh, control group. Uh, the results of the uh, confidence and satisfaction uh, were statistically different between the groups in favor of the intervention group. So um, the, the results indicate that the VR learning modules were perceived as more motivational than the traditional learning material. Uh, participants uh, may be low response to the relevance uh, um, aspects of the IMMS uh, could be attributed to the uh, fact that the VR learning module only um, involved three basic statistics concepts, mean, median, and mode. Uh, so maybe the students wanted to know more about statistics. Uh, the other thing is that uh, since we were still developing the app, we had some uh, software uh, bugs in the app that some of the students, they could not con uh, complete the um, uh, experience uh, till the end. With respect to the uh, engineering identity um, questionnaire, so 
the students, uh, if you remember from the flowchart, we had two, we had administered the engineering identity uh, survey twice, uh, before the intervention and after the intervention, or at the beginning of the semester and at the end of the semester. So uh, for both the groups, we saw an increase uh, of engineering identity uh, score. Um, and they were, uh, st this, this increase was statistically uh, significant. Um, and also there was a difference between the groups in terms of uh, engineering identity. Um, the results also indicate similar trend for the different aspects of the engineering identity um, um, questionnaire, the recognition, interest, and performance. Um, when comparing the responses for the um, differences between the engineering identity questionnaire, the results were not statistically, uh, sorry, were, were statistically different between the uh, groups in favor of the control group uh, in this case. Uh, originally, we hypothesized that the intervention will increase the engineering identity, but in our case, actually, we did not see this in the, in the data. And this could be attributed to the uh, same problems that we had, uh, which is the software, maybe bugs. And the other thing is that our uh, module was about manufacturing. Maybe other students, uh, uh, they, they prefer maybe seeing uh, other systems such as service systems or healthcare systems, and that maybe uh, reduce their uh, engineering uh, identity. With respect to the knowledge test, uh, we, uh, looking at the um, lower level uh, skills and higher level uh, skills, this is based on Bloom's taxonomy. We had some questions for, uh, with low level and some questions for uh, higher level. Uh, we saw a difference between the students' scores on the lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills for both groups. And the results show that the difference in score between the lower and higher uh, skills questions uh, actually was, uh, was not statistically significant. And uh, there was no statistical difference between also the final uh, test scores for the groups. Uh, so the results uh, suggest uh, the intervention did not have a significant impact on student performance on the knowledge test. Uh, this could potentially be attributed to the fact that uh, the VR learning module um, showed basic concepts of uh, statistics, uh, while the knowledge tests, they asked uh, ask the students on, on more advanced uh, topics, on the, on the same topics and more advanced topics. So the findings that we have from this uh, experiment, uh, they reveal that the impact of the VR learning uh, modules uh, on motivation, they were positive. And also they provide us with some valuable insights that will help us improve uh, and um, add to the uh, modules that we uh, developed uh, to make them uh, better and remove any uh, challenges and limitations that we have. Uh, now I'm going to talk about some of the limitations that we uh, experienced during the project. Uh, the first one is that the creation of the VR learning modules required really more development time and effort than what we expected. Uh, therefore, many concepts that we wanted to uh, implement, they were not implemented in the, um, in the module at the time of the experiment. And also we did not have uh, time to thoroughly uh, test the, um, uh, our uh, app uh, for usability. Uh, we have another line of research where we look at how to create VR environments uh, automatically so that we can reduce our time and effort. We use uh, machine learning and uh, more specifically reinforcement learning uh, for that purpose. The other challenge that we saw is that instructors sometimes are hesitant to try and experiment with the new approaches during class time, uh, feeling that this time will be wasted and might impact how much material they will cover during the, the semester. Our original plan was to experiment uh, or to use the uh, module multiple times across the uh, or during the class, class time or throughout the semester. 
but due to this challenge, we implemented the experiment at the end of the semester. It should be noted that this uh, challenge is not just only for our project, but we should expect this to, uh, or to see this challenge when we use a new technology in a class room. The third um, problem or challenge that we saw is that uh, the VR learning modules were developed for a manufacturing system. Some students might prefer to interact with other systems such as service or healthcare systems. So we, uh, will, we have plans to uh, create other uh, systems in the future uh, to include other uh, types of, of, of systems. The last thing is that we noticed that some students, they um, struggled uh, when using VR, even though we provided some initial um, training, but that was not enough uh, to give them uh, work with the VR smoothly. So we intend to improve that tutorial in the future. So these are uh, our publications uh, from this project. And we have a, a, a presentation or a paper coming up uh, in August in the ID, IDETC conference, uh, which is now a virtual conference. If you're going to that conference, uh, please feel free to attend that presentation. And we have also a project website for our project that you can uh, look at. Uh, we will be updating this uh, in the future. So thank you for listening. Please let me know if you have any uh, questions. Omar, there's a few questions in the uh, Q&A pod. The first question was, what was the software for the VR? So we used uh, a Unity game engine um, to develop the uh, virtual reality. Um, uh, that's mainly the VR software, which is you have actually to program the uh, environment. It's not uh, a simple drag and drop. So you have to create the interactions and the env env environment itself. So this is what we use. Okay, thank you. Another question that came in, uh, the, uh, this is the question, the common theme carried through the course sequence has been used in graduate health professions, educational programs like medicine, nursing, physical therapy, et cetera. It is sometimes referred to as patient-based learning. Did your control group still have this common theme to the core sequence, i.e., was it the only difference the VR or were, was the curriculum also different? So we tried not to change the curriculum. So we kept the, the curriculum still has the same uh, sequence. What we, are, what, we try, what we are trying to do is that to have that same story that goes, uh, that the students would see in different courses. Each time they see in a course, they look at different aspects of that environment. So uh, that's what we uh, are planning to do, not changing the whole curriculum. Uh, the only change is that having this story uh, going across multiple courses where students can, where students can relate the concepts that they learn from different courses uh, using that story or theme. Hopefully I answered the question correctly. And another one just came in. Uh, what software did you use to create the VR modules? What was the time and effort investment um, in regards to staff, programmers, et cetera? Yeah, I, I don't have a number for the time, but we have been doing this for more than a year now. Uh, I, uh, at my campus, we only have undergraduate stu students and they are coming from com computer science, uh, software engineers, computer engineering. These are the students that I hire for developing these uh, environments, but they take a, lo a very long time to develop. So we expected to have more actually concepts in, in the VR environment, but after a year or more than a year, we only had some basic environments because it took a really long time to uh, create the environment and try to get rid of uh, all the bugs and uh, make it run smoothly. Uh, a follow-up question that came in, have you implemented the story yet? Have you looked for the difference in student outcomes from implement, implementing the story? Uh, so this is a pre what, we, what I showed in this uh, presentation is the preliminary uh, this is the first time we implement the uh, VR app in a classroom. And it was actually last semester, not this semester. We had plans to collect more data this 
semester, but with the pandemic, uh, everything shut down and we could not collect data. Uh, but this is what we are trying to do, is that looking at how the story across courses would impact the student performance, their knowledge, their motivation, and their engineering identity. But unfortunately, uh, last semester, we could not collect more data to look at these over time. The only time we collected was last semester, and that was the first time we collected uh, data for, for the app, and we implemented some analysis. Hopefully, next semester, we'll be able uh, to collect some data, but we are not sure yet, actually. Uh, any other question? There are none in the uh, Q&A pod right now. I, I can in, uh, encourage attendees, if you have any more questions, to please add them to the Q&A. Nomar, um, if you're able to stick around for a few minutes, if there's any questions that come in, even at the start of the next presentation, you're welcome to answer sure. them uh, in the Q&A pod. Uh, and please feel free to send me any questions on my email uh, as well. Fantastic. And thank you, Omar, uh, for sharing this innovative approach using virtual environments to enhance your curriculum. So while we give our next presenters a minute to transition slides, we're going to have some Penn State trivia for our audience members. So uh, what recently released Penn State tool was awarded a second place prize at the App, App I can't say that word, App Atomy Awards. We'll give everyone a 20 or 30 seconds to answer. So the correct answer was Penn State Go, and the majority of the people that answered uh, were correct. So with